new museum relics are officially coming to rise of kingdoms it looks like they could be here as soon as next week we have updates to older museum relics as well so today we're gonna jump into everything coming in update 1.0.81 but first what's going on guys cheers if you appreciate breaking news for rise of kingdoms drop a thumbs up on the video and subscribe to the channel about 69 percent of you guys are not uh you're not subscribed so let's jump right into this okay number one museum day event series walk with the past into the future museum day is just around the corner and we've prepared a variety of fun events to celebrate this day of global art and culture esmeralda's prayer is coming back this is the wheel with up to three arrows that you can spin all at the same time it's a decent event i think you get some nice value there esmeralda's collection try your luck and win some of esmeralda's riches okay sharp eyes quick hands this is the jigsaw puzzle event race against time we've seen this event before and triarch trouble three enemies meet in a struggle for dominance who will emerge the hedermon have we seen that event before for? I'm not actually sure here, but let's see. The rewards for the Esmeralda Prayers event have been adjusted. For kingdoms in the season of conquest, engineering equipment blueprint fragments have been added to the list of rewards when opening conquest blueprint fragment choice chests earned through this event. See the event calendar for a detailed schedule. And that makes sense. I think they're just talking about the either the Lupine Vestments set, or also there's the epic set that apparently is not actually a set. It's the Knights stuff. One thing that I noticed, which is actually super annoying, is I have 400 epic purple blueprint choice fragment chests, and I can't choose the Knights one, but then they implemented a new one that includes engineering that I can get the Knights. It's come on why didn't you just update the old ones Lilith like really it's a purple piece like what do you, it's for engineering what why are we why are we acting like this is something crazy like very frustrating that they did that but it looks like they are updating those chests over time so they're going to be there for Esmeralda's prayer as well okay Orc of Osiris and Osiris League optimization match spectators can now view the details of both teams skill bars cool added pro mode for spectators while pro mode is enabled you will not be able to see what skills both teams have equipped until they are used for the first time in addition you will not be able to see skill cooldown times skill availability and both teams skill energy reserves okay when re-watching Ark of Osiris and Osiris League matches pro mode can be toggled on or off when spectating an ongoing time delayed match pro mode will be enabled by default and cannot be disabled that's probably a good thing the time delay between matches and their live streams has been changed to five minutes obviously we have the league bets and eye for talent coming soon in just a couple of days so osiris league is right around the corner ladies and gentlemen lost kingdom optimization removed the now or never barbarian buster lord of war territory grab strategic reserves and other such events from the season of conquest lost kingdom isn't lord of war the event where you get a bunch of goodies for just increasing your troop power and isn't strategic reserve where you get these commander sculpture chests for the gathering commanders this just seems like a bad idea like why would you like now or never is the event where you use speed ups on training and stuff to get rewards like what why would you remove value from the players during the lost kingdom unless they're going to replace these events with something that's a little bit more relevant to kvk then sure i can understand that but removing these events wh why what uh, were they breaking the game this makes no sense at all and i hope that we get some more clarification as to why they're doing this unless i'm missing something that you guys can tell me in the comment section below this just seems like kind of a bad change it's not a big deal but it's like why the enemy elimination event will now occur four times per season previously it was three its rewards have been adjusted accordingly so okay that probably means that it's lower rewards spread across four possibly instead of the same rewards yeah I don't know I'm kind of indifferent about this change to be honest with you guys I feel like enemy elimination like the points that you need you get it in like five minutes like it's, it takes it's like a 10 minute thing and boom you're done so I don't know whatever lost kingdom view optimization added battle hotspot tips lost kingdoms with ongoing pvp combat will be given a special tag in addition the location of ongoing pvp battles and the alliances involved will be marked on the map this is awesome and this is going to be really good for people who do live streams or coverage of kvks in videos this is going to make it so much easier for people to just quickly see you know where's the fighting happening where are the battles happening because a lot of times in my alliance people will be sharing coordinates to different kvks in the chat to kind of like be like yo look what's happening over here but if you could just straight up see it from like the worldview list 
that's awesome right when viewing other lost kingdoms you can change which camps perspective you are viewing the map from if you switch your perspective to a certain camps all information related to that camps troops will be shown in blue that's really cool however i also wonder like are you going to be able to use a second account to just get more information about your enemy camp right i wonder how that's going to work how they're going to account for that or if there's if the information revealed isn't really going to be anything special overall again great for spectators great for you know i'm a little bit biased here but it's great for content creators of course strategic view mode will no longer show governor avatars and other such information in addition when viewing other lost kingdoms avatars quests and other such information will not be shown okay cool added the ability to collapse all interfaces in strategic view with a single tap awesome i don't know what strategic view is that must have come in an update that i completely missed also i don't view other kvks and kingdoms very often so it is what it is all right this is what you guys clicked on the video for museum optimizations added exhibits for attila and takeda in the museum the very first season three commanders are getting their museum what does this mean ladies and gentlemen well it opens the floodgates for literally every other season three commander in rise of kingdoms that is massive news okay which means Guan Yu Leonidas those are probably gonna they're probably next right now if we remember last year it took them a long time to put all the season two commanders into the game into the museum and I expect that to be the case here as well but the fact that we're starting with Attila and Takeda that's really good I'm very excited to see what these museum buffs are next they said unlocked a new level of bonuses for Constantine Charles Martel Alexander the Great Richard the first and Pyrus's museum relics so that I mean that's all the infantry commanders so all the infantry are getting a new bonus this is a new level the bonuses from Attila's relic will only take effect in lost kingdom now there was actually a correction over on discord this is supposed to say in season of conquest okay so the bonuses from attila's relic will only take effect in the season of conquest this will be the case for all commander relics added to the museum in the future so everything prior to this release stays the same as far as i can tell from this but all of the season three and newer commanders so basically from today onwards anything new that they add is only going to be in season of conquest and that makes sense because now we're starting to look at commanders that are actually like almost meta vi viable like they're meta adjacent they're not meta but like they still can be used whereas Richard the first for example it doesn't really matter when you use him he's really not meta except for kvk1 now of course they don't reveal to us what the new level of these relics is going to be previously the new level would increase the existing stats so in from 25 to 35 and health went from 5 to 10. if we extrapolate that out to the third level then we would expect 45 percent of attack and 15 percent health for charles martel however i personally what i hope they do here is add a third stat to the third upgrade right like give him five percent more normal damage or something like that right and maybe a smaller bump to the existing stats so instead of going from 35 to 45 you go from 35 to 40 and then instead of from 10 to 15 you go from 10 to 12 but then you give him a third stat that's like bonus to normal damage or maybe five percent infantry defense or something like that right because i feel like uh, if if they just keep increasing the existing stats here they're kind of locked in on that one thing and eventually it's not going to work so for example we look at like for example Richard right like I never even unlocked the second relic for Richard because I don't care like this is not going to do it for me right so if the third level is 20 percent March speed and nine percent counterattack damage like who cares right I want a third thing I want a new reason to invest in these right I want a new and also if they put a really good upgrade on the third relic then that's going to cause players to really want to invest in those um, in those relics and and go all in on one to get that really good upgrade whereas if they just keep increasing the same stats it's like you've already made your mind if those stats matter or not for example looking at freddy right um, eventually you know are we going to get a third upgrade for freddy is he going to get 55 percent attack and you know 20 percent skill damage reduction is that really what freddy is missing 
or should they use this as an opportunity to add something new to Freddy's relic I think they should use it as an opportunity to add something new again especially for commanders like Barca and like Charlemagne where clearly the relics did not move the needle for them in the slightest right like absolutely nobody cares about these relics completely defeats the purpose of the relic right I hope that we see a third stat added for the commanders that are getting the upgrade also um, I wonder why they're doing like they're starting with infantry like they're cl they clearly have picked out just the infantry commanders which I'm not complaining about first of all Alexander the Great getting a second level of bonuses now Constantine now like people are running Gorgo Constantine as Garrison meta and now you're buffing that meta that's crazy people are running Liu Che Alex in the field and getting five to one trades and now you're gonna buff Alexander the Great that's amazing the timing for this is really really good for infantry but I wonder why they're starting with infantry right like last year we got all of the museum upgrades all at once and that made sense and then you could go through and pick out the ones that you think are worth it now we're it looks like we're starting with a one troop type and then maybe next update we're gonna get you know Guan Yu and Leonidas added to the museum and then they're gonna buff all of the cavalry or all of the archers or whatever the case might be so either way I'm super excited for the new updates coming to the museum and of course as soon as we get word of what those stats are for these commanders I will be making a video so if you don't want to miss that seriously subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you're notified when I uh, post that also I'll post it on my discord which is linked in the description below PC version optimization added the custom formation feature you can now set up a temporary custom formation allowing you to control all troops in the formation simultaneously it's seven in the morning and I'm thinking about this for a really long time and I don't know what this means custom formation feature what do you mean all troops I guess we'll have to see but also this is only available for PC that's kind of funny okay next they say miscellaneous optimization troop loadout you can save a troop you currently have configured in the troop dispatch interface as a troop loadout as of this version you can save up to 45 troop loadouts at a time Ooh. when saving a troop loadout the armaments and equipment of the troops commanders will also be saved that's really interesting right now we can only have up to 15 things configured right because we have one five ten fifteen so that's what I'm assuming they're talking about for troop loadouts so 45 is huge immigration optimization added advanced filters to the kingdom overview page you can use these filters to quickly find kingdoms that match your specific criteria that's really good I know a lot of players always ask me hey Omni do you know a kingdom like this that I can join here if you could just filter through and get your criteria that's awesome added the immigration status to your current kingdom and other information to the lost temples immigration management page very good quality of life thing there added a new legendary quality engineering weapon which can be obtained in the following ways blueprints for the new engineering equipment can be earned through the holy knight's treasure and hunt for history events after the update reward chests from the Ceroli crisis without scaling mode golden kingdom and ian's ballads events have a chance to obtain blueprint fragments for the new engineering equipment they are going all in on engineering and I'm going to make a video about this probably in a couple of months actually about engineering because um, I've been I've been brew I've been brewing something I've been cooking something okay these chains only apply to season of conquest of course um so yeah basically what they're saying is right now as far as weapons go we have no and no real engineering weapon right we have the scepter of glory glorious goddess which is universal then we have the witch's feathered staff which is great because this uses bones which is very cool but the stats here aren't like anything crazy and then if you go through all the other weapons well you really only have the knight's oath sworn bow which is a ton of attack and march speed very good stuff there uh, especially with the talent but there's no legendary equivalent really right um and so are we going to be seeing a six piece lupine set uh we have a four piece set bonus but not a six piece set bonus because there are no six pieces are we going to be seeing that six piece who knows or is it going to be um something else entirely but what's worth noting is it's not a kvk piece so they still don't have a kvk piece in the shop i think eventually they probably will but for now uh they are it's good that they're at least getting a legendary weapon okay in season of conquest kingdoms the epic quality blueprint fragment choice chests rewarded by the esmeralda's house event have been replaced with epic quality blueprint fragment choice chests that include engineering equipment with blueprint fragments okay we talked about this earlier in the video optimize the buff view interface when dispatching a new troop buffs will now be sorted by buff type and unit type okay I think the buff overview interface has always been really confusing for for your commanders so that's good edited the description of the last stand commander talent in the attack talent tree 
to include the talent's cooldown of two seconds. This change is purely textual and not impact and will not impact the talent's actual effect. Okay, so the last stand talent is the final talent in the talent tree, and it says Whenever this commander's troop launches any basic attack, it is a 10% chance to gain a 2% bonus to damage dealt for three seconds, though it cannot use active skills during that time. And also now there's a two second cooldown. And to be honest with you guys, no one cares. No one cares. I literally didn't even know what this did because nobody uses this. This is actually a garbage talent. I have no idea who uses this. Is this like, I, who doesn't want to use their active skills? I don't know. I still think they should give us a talent reset for that though. I don't care if it's only the text that's changing. The text is what we're using to make our decision to get it or not. So like you can't know if there's a cooldown without getting it right. Um, because the text didn't say it. So I think we should still get a skill reset for that, but, or I'm sorry, a talent reset for that or a skill reset, uh, but hey, whatever it is, what it is added commander stories for Theodora and Justinian. That's cute. I think uh, weren't they married back in the day? So that's kind of cute. Alliance flags and fortresses currently under construction will now show the territory they will control once they are complete marked on the map using a dotted line. Okay. That's pretty cool. Added mail notifications when appointing or evoking kingdom titles. Oh, that's really good too. That's I like that a lot because before when you would get a kingdom title, you would see the little banner pop up on the screen slowly and it would it would go across and you'd have to wait to see oh am I the one that got Duke am I the one that got Duke now it looks like you're just gonna get a, a notification in the mail that says hey you got a you got Duke or hey you no longer have Duke okay so overall this is um, a pretty good update I would say there's a lot here that I like the things that I don't like are really just removing the events here like that just seems pointless why would you remove the events there i don't understand that at all but overall like new museum relics is awesome tons of quality of life improvements here which is really really good so i'm really excited for this new update of course let them know what you currently think about these updates uh, by clicking this green button in your in-game mail okay please do this this they are asking you for feedback so please genuinely tell them how you feel do not be rude do not curse do not do any of that of course give them constructive feedback criticism or if you like the update just be like hey good update they would appreciate that as well um guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it as while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video with the information for the new museum relics coming soon and comment down below your thoughts on this new update what do you guys think about this are you excited for the museum relics are you excited for the optimizations to kvk and the in the way that you view them and things like that i would love to hear from you guys down there who's excited for legendary engineering weapons baby are you guys excited for that i know I'm, I'm kind of memeing but i know that some people actually are let me know in the comment section below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace